Hi everyone, my name is Giselle and I'll be teaching you ecology. So what is ecology? It's the study of distribution and abundance of organisms, their interactions with other organisms, and their interactions with the physical environment. So, there are different levels, as you could see here, and I'm going to go through each one. So the first level is just the organism, one. The survival and reproduction, the unit of natural selection, right? And then the second one is population. Population is living with your same species. And then it's community. It's interactions among populations with different species. Then the ecosystem, which is interaction between abiotic and biotic factors, meaning living and non-living. Then at the end, it's a biosphere. It's the global process. Population ecology is the study of growth, abundance, distribution of population. So population abundance and distribution are described by the following terms. Size, density, dispersion, age structure, and survivorship curves. So size is the total number of individuals in the population. Density is the total number of individ individuals per area or volume occupied. And then dispersion describes how individuals in a population are distributed. So in the picture here, there's clumped, like fishes. There's uniform, like penguins, and random, which are like plants. And then there's age structure. It's a description of the abundance of individuals of each age. So this line is the separations between males and females. And then the bottom is the number of people, and then here is the age. So as you could see here, it's a rapid growth because we start off with a lot of people and end up with a little. And in the United States, it's a slow growth because it's basically the same. And then in Germany, it's a decline growth for this case. And then moving on to survivorship curves. This describes how individuals in a species varies during their lifetimes. So there's type 1, which means you have high survival when you're young and then die when you're old. And then type 2 is a straight line, meaning you could die any moment. And then type 3 is you have a high chance of dying when you're, you're young. And as you get to the bottom here, you have a better chance of living. So there are two general patterns of population growth, exponential and logistic. Exponential growth, it just shoots up. It's called a J-curve. And then logistic growth, since it has this line, which stands for carrying capacity, it's meaning it has to grow. And then it curves off and stays the same when it reaches carrying capacity. It's also known as the S curve. And then here are the populations of the graphs in the bottom. Finally, limiting factors. These are elements that prevent a population from at attaining its biotic potential, meaning having the most organisms living in the environment. There's two types that can limit this, density-dependent and des density-independent. So density-dependent um, is the effect of factor on size of the population and has a great impact. So for example, this picture is like parasites and diseases. If this hits the population, it's most likely to kill more than half of the population because it's contagious, right? Then we have toxic waste, meaning like pollution and how we affect our environment, which affects, it, affects the animal population. Because out of our pollution, we tend to kill animals, which is really bad. So try to get away from that, please, please, please. Final slide, density independent. So these are factors that occur independently to limit the population which I gave you examples here of natural disasters. If a natural disaster hits, it's not a great impact 
because it could just kill like few animals. They are most likely to, to survive this. So thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something about ecology.